so um, we were in verse 27 right so paul um, again reminding the believers and saying that you know challenging them saying you know, let your conduct be worthy right let your behavior be worthy of the gospel so you know irrespective of where you are irrespective of who you are with you know whether <clears throat> me as a leader if i'm there or not or you know let let your conduct be worthy so that you will be strong you will stand firm and uh, stand fast in one spirit and in one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel so he's talking about unity that with one spirit and also uh, with one mind right uh, that you will strive together for the um for the faith of the gospel that you will move on together you will press in together as a church as a body of believers for the faith of the gospel right um and uh, yeah verse 28 <clears throat> okay let's uh, let's read 28 onwards till the end of the chapter now the next three verses right and uh, not in any way terrified by your adversaries which is to them a proof of perdition but to you of salvation and that from god for to you it has been granted on behalf of christ not only to believe in him but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me okay so um verse 28 and not in any way so he's talking about verse 27 where you know as you live like this as you live with one heart one spirit and one one mind and uh, and uh, striving together for the sake of the gospel that uh, in nothing uh you know you don't have to be fearful of anything you don't have to be afraid of anything uh, any of your adversaries right so um uh, you don't have to be afraid of persecution you don't have to be afraid of uh, uh he's, he's talking about you know whether <clears throat> uh, whether it's persecution whether it's uh, um which, which was intense like during those times and <clears throat> so uh, if you stand unafraid uh, which is to them uh, when they see that uh, that that is the, you know for them it's a proof of perdition or proof of uh, their own eternal destiny right which is eternal hell or a, a destiny away from uh, apart from god right? which is to them you know when they see the reality that the fact that you are unafraid the fact that you are choosing to stand strong choosing to you know uh, uh, continue on for the faith of the gospel which is for them it is a proof of perdition right but for you it is um, it says but for you it is uh, the uh, it is a proof of salvation right which is from god so for them it is a proof of you know uh, it is a proof that yes they are uh, you know, if they're continuing to reject Christ, if they're continuing to pursue, persecute the, the body of Christ, and that for them their destiny is, you know, this is the proof of their destiny, uh, it, which is, which is uh, 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 an eternal future without Christ, an eternal destiny without Christ, and which is hell. Uh, and But for you as believers, it is a proof of your salvation. Right? And then he goes on to say, <clears throat> Verse 29, for, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Now, suffering for the sake of Christ, right? Suffering for the sake of Christ is what uh, he's talking about. Let me just uh, uh, share the screen. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so Paul, you know, we we know that from his journeys, from his uh, uh, from his uh, ministry and his accounts of sharing his ministry, that 
he went through a lot of hardships went through a lot of physical discomfort hardships imprisonment punishments and so on right so suffering was part of it that suffering um, it was an everyday thing like he says i know we die daily and we carry about in us a sentence of death right so everywhere they turned it was uh, it was danger uh, either physical danger you know there were there were fears and he, he's talking about that right so uh, it says that uh, you know this uh, it has been granted on behalf of christ not only to believe but also also to suffer for his sake now now this could be different for people different people right but the fact is that uh, there is a measure of suffering for the sake of the gospel now it could be either people ridiculing or making fun of the you know the stand that we take for the sake of the gospel or the or the values that you stand for uh because you seem different from the values of the world right uh, from uh, the values of you know whichever environment you are in so it could be because of that so it could be just ridicule or making fun or you know uh, of you so it could be that or you know it could be as extreme as uh, persecution and even loss of life so whatever you know the the uh, uh what would be the measure of uh, you know of persecution or suffering <clears throat> this is for the sake of christ and we know that suffering happens because of various things right suffering uh happens because of uh, because of uh, um our own choices sometimes suffering happens because of uh, you know our own poor choices you know we make some poor decisions and then uh, because of our bad decisions because of which uh, a consequence of that is suffering because uh, you know um, suffering happens you know because of uh, sin uh, you know there is sin in the world general sin this because the nature of sin and there is corruption and decay and everything that's around and because of that there's suffering suffering happens because of a direct intervention of satan the powers of darkness they try to bring in suffering because we we read I'm sorry we read in uh, we read in john chapter 10 that the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy so when he comes to do that you know there is suffering uh suffering also happens because of you know others actions towards us and so on so here it he talks about suffering for the sake of christ you know for the sake of the gospel um if when when you are doing things for the sake of the gospel and you're living for the sake of the gospel and the suffering that comes as a result of that right so he's saying that it has been it has been granted to us as people who believe in him uh it has been granted for us also to suffer for the sake uh, for his sake <clears throat> uh having the same conflict which you saw in me and you now hear is in me so he's saying you know you might also go through the same kind of conflict the same kind of you know that pulling away uh in different directions in the in what was it and you know he said he was he was saying just you know um a few verses back to saying then hey, i'm hard pressed uh between the two uh, wanting to depart and to be with the lord or to be with you yeah, you're here in the flesh right so so he say he's talking about that kind of a conflict and uh, <clears throat> so he says you know which you saw in me and now you hear is in me you know you might also go through the same thing right okay so let's let's move on to chapter Two. Um, yeah. Chapter two. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. having the same love being of one accord of one mind let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others 
Okay, so uh, verse one. Therefore, if there is any consolation, so um, so we know, you know, that there is consolation in Christ. There is um, comfort in Christ. Uh, and so he's saying, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, we know that if any affection and mercy, we know that all that is there in Christ. And all this um, we draw from Christ. right? And you know, the word comfort, meaning paraclesis, which he's called the comforter, the parakletos, like the one who comes alongside and brings comfort and brings um, and stands with us to strengthen us, right? Um, so he is talking about the one who does that. So if there is anything, you know, if there is all this, if, if we, you know, we experienced consolation in Christ, uh, comfort of love or fellowship of the spirit, you know, uh, koinonia, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the communion of the Holy Spirit, if any affection and mercy, right? Uh, affection and mercy from God and through our fellow believers, if there is anything, saying, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Okay, so all this we have in Christ, we have through Christ. Like we receive from Christ. Like we receive the communion or fellowship. We have the communion or fellowship. We have um, the consolation from Christ, the comfort from Christ, love, affection, mercy. We have. And so he's saying, if there is anything, you know, if you have this, then fulfill my joy. What um, he's talking about is, you know, I would be even more, my joy would be complete. It right, will be brought to compl completion if you live in this manner. And what is that manner in which he wants people to live, the believers to live? By being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. <clears throat> okay, so he's, um, he's calling and he's inviting the believers to live in ut unity. Okay, being of one accord of one mind. Okay, so uh, we know that, um, you know, he's not talking about uniformity. Okay, uniformity means, you know, I like the same thing and I, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I do the same thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like that. You know, we, each one of us have been uh, made uniquely in Christ. And um, so he is not talking about the sameness or uniformity, but, uh, but he's talking about, uh, unity in christ right. that does not uh, that that does not there, there is no striving there is no conflict there is no pulling out apart because there is strength and there is uh, blessing in being united right in in being of one heart in being of one mind uh, which is what the early church also you know uh, experienced right if you look at uh, acts chapter 1 we read several in several places, Acts chapter one and you know the first few chapters, we we read that they were of or they were in one accord, okay, which meant that uh, you know the um, the foundation of their belief, right, what they believed in, and uh, they had this oneness of heart and mind. They were with one expectation. They came to that place of being united. Okay, so we see in Acts chapter one and verse fourteen, uh, we see that these all these all continued. You no, know, the verse before that lists uh, who were there, who were all who continued. It's talking about uh, you know um, uh, the, the 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 disciples, and then verse fourteen says these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. So they continued with one accord in prayer in and supplication with the women. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Okay, so they continued in one accord. In prayer, with one accord, in prayer and supplication. Okay, then chapter 2 also we see the same thing. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Okay, 
they were all with one accord so we you know when we when we see that uh, uh, you know see that phrase being a one accord it means or one mind um, uh, which means unity to uh, to uh, one second similar in sentiment to be like minded to be of one spirit and to be like minded to uh, to be similar in sentiment um to to reach for the same thing to reach for the same goal to have the same expectation right to be of one uh one to be in one accord okay so um so the the, the greek word uh, conveys that meaning so on the day of pentecost they were in one accord and and this is what happened right um and then the psalmist also talks about you know uh, about unity and how uh, when people come together united in the lord that there is great blessing right so um so the thing is this paul saying you know come to that place of unity be united be of one accord and uh, and uh, i'm just reading this verse psalm 133 so the psalmist says, oh, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, freshness, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. So, um, you know, there's something that happens in the spiritual realm when believers are uh, with one accord. So Paul wants that to happen to these believers. Right? So he says um, that you would be like-minded and be of one accord. Um, verse 3, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit or pride. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Okay, so talks about humility and uh, which destroys pride and arrogance, right? So he's saying, let nothing be done through selfish ambition. You know, you don't be selfish um, uh, uh, and let it let nothing, you know, anything of the uh, of, of the work of God or he uh, says nothing, which means uh, which means nothing really, right? So let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Okay, so which is, uh, I think it's it's a good point to reflect and see um, how can I live this practically? You know, how can I apply this principle or this truth practically in my life? Right. So, how can I live a life where I'm, you know, I'm I, I'm not living for myself. But I'm also looking out for the interests of others so that it is a win-win. Right? So both are winning. So everybody stands to gain. And how can I do that? It's not like I am winning at others' expense or, or I am benefiting at others' expense. Right? So one is, you know, it's not like I'm taking away from something or making someone putting someone at a disadvantage so that i can be at a beneficial place right so uh, it's really going against uh, the ways of the world right those of us who are in the world who are called not to be of the world this is going against the ways of the world right so he's saying you be of one accord you know you know the spiritual um uh, reality of it what will happen when we have you know of one accord of one mind so let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit or pride okay but in lowliness of mind you be humble um, and you esteem others let each one esteem other esteem others better than himself so it's a it's a life of honor right you're esteeming the other person better than oneself right so uh, well that does not mean that you're putting down yourself right you recognize who you are because paul also talks about you know we need to acknowledge every good thing that is in us um, through christ 
right so we we acknowledge all the good things we acknowledge all the benefits we acknowledge who we have become uh, because of christ dwelling in us um, but you esteem the other person better than yourself you know so it's a life of honor honoring the person respecting the other person right for who that person is right and not what the person has or what the person can do just for the fact that you know is here's a fellow believer or here's a you know fellow human being so esteem the better uh, esteem the other uh, better than himself verse 4 let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others you know, which is the same thing as let nothing be done through selfish ambition but here is saying you know if you look out for the you know this is the antidote or really the medicine for selfish ambition you know, which will destroy selfish ambition if you look out for your interests you know nothing wrong in that um you know if certain things you require you need to do that you need to get that you need to you know maybe build that in your life nothing wrong in that right so um look out not only for your not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others okay so what is it that that will benefit others what will be what is it that will be beneficial for others as well so consider that look out for that okay so um so that is what uh, paul says look out you know watch out um it is like um, you know that that word meaning uh, it's it, it means you know to to focus to take aim okay so when you when you take aim maybe you you have uh, you know you know, like a bow and arrow or a catapult or you know something to hit some target to hit you're taking aim right you you know you you take aim at the target and you want to shoot that you're focusing on that there's intense focus you know you don't want to miss so so paul is saying you know you do the same thing look out for the interests of others also you know while you are so focused in an intense um intense in your focus on benefiting yourself nothing wrong in that you need to do that in order to accomplish that but can you do the same thing for others also right or why don't you do the same thing for others also right okay then um verses 5 to 11 okay um let's read let's uh, go through that okay so verse 5 onwards let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death on the cross death of the cross sorry therefore god also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father okay so um, she's talking about uh, how to treat others right in the previous verses how to treat one another how to have the uh, to be like-minded being of one accord etc and then he goes on to say let this mind be in you you know let this thought pattern let this way of thinking uh, be in you which was also in christ jesus now we know that uh, you know jesus is our example that jesus is our role model and so the same kind of mind okay so uh, phroneo in the greek meaning 
you know the same sentiment or same thoughts or same pattern of thinking right so you you also have the same mind let this be in you which was also in the lord jesus okay. so so what is that mind okay who being in the form of god right and uh, nature of god who being in the form of god that word form meaning image uh, nature shape appearance everything right who being in the form of god um, made himself of no reputation i mean th sorry thought it not robbery to be equal with god so he was he was in the form of god he was e in other words it means that he was equal with god he was god himself right you know if you look at uh, colossians it talks about <clears throat> yeah, we're going to study that next so colossians talks about that one colossians 1 and uh, verse 15 and 16 talks about the deity of the christ right he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead and in all things that in all things he may have preeminence so talks about the deity talks about the respect and honor and the glory of of the son right so he's saying that is what it is is in the form of god is equal with god right and he is deity himself but this is what he did okay which is verse 7 what did he do but made himself of no reputation okay so he did something this deity this glory um, this awesome god he made himself of no reputation you know that word we've studied before kino which means he emptied himself he emptied himself he laid aside that that glory and uh, he walked in what we can call you know what we've been you know, the term used um, sonship glory to explain the kind of glory that he walked in on the earth right being filled with the spirit right he emptied himself of that glory of that majesty right he was he's still deity he emptied himself of that and um, and taking the form of a bond servant like right? taking the form of a bond servant um, he didn't hold on to deity he didn't hold on to any of that but he took the form of a bond servant okay emptied himself um, and that word uh, mean means that uh, he laid aside his uh, you know his, his glory and then he took on he added on the form of a bond servant the uh, and and what else he, what did he do he came in the likeness of men coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of the cross okay so uh, he emptied himself and uh, he humbled himself um, to the point of death even the death of the cross okay so this is what he did is completely obedient to the will of the father his deity the son being co-equal with the father he laid aside all that and took on the form of a bond servant and completely obedient to the will of the father uh, to the point of death the death on the cross okay so let that mind be in you let that mind be in you you know um, so is it, is asking for it's, it's a big ask right saying let this kind of a mind be in you because this is what we saw in christ jesus and this is how he lived he came and he in order to fulfill uh, the will of the father he did this 
so also you must you must do the same thing right so he says that when he, when he did that verse 9 therefore god has also highly exalted him because the lord was willing to empty himself and willing to uh, humble himself and he was you know he just willing to submit himself to the will of the father and obedient to the point of death even death of the cross now what has happened is that therefore the father has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name okay so now this is something which is which is amazing and uh, which is which which is what happens when we exalt that when we humble ourselves that god exalts and exaltation comes from him and this is what happened to the lord jesus that he was exalted and he, the name that was given above every other name verse 10 that at the at the name of jesus it's a it's a sovereign you know, all powerful uh, name and authority or title and authority right so it's it's not just the the name but the but the authority that name carries that person carries right so at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth of those under the earth so he's literally he's talking about the entire universe and saying at the name of jesus every knee shall bow meaning you know every uh, everything is in subjection okay so literally uh, when when you talk about that when you talk about uh, knee shall bow talking about how uh, you come in you know uh, you bend low right? you're placing yourself lower uh, humbling yourself and giving honor right, uh, to the other right and uh, when you say i bend my i bow my knee it's saying that you acknowledge you know it's a place of bringing oneself um, humbling oneself to the point of worship right? when you bow down and saying it's a it's a very uh, what do you say it's a posture of extreme humility right you just and you're saying that you know if, if one is kneeling down and saying you know it's a it's a posture of absolute surrender right so here paul writes and he says that uh, that at the name of jesus that every knee should bow so that's the kind of place that the son has. But this is the mind that he had even before uh, when he went to, to the cross. This is the kind of thing that he had. This is the kind of thought or mind or perspective that he had to humble himself. He thought of himself. Uh, he just, of nothing, you know, he just laid it all aside uh, for what was before him. So this is what has happened that at the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, every knee should bow. Everything stands, everything comes um, under or subservient to the name of Jesus, to the person, the power, the title, right? the entire universe. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So every tongue would confess it, would acknowledge it, that yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. Now this uh, this need not be, you know, people even who agree, you know, they would just confess. They would profess, acknowledge, yes, Jesus is Lord. Okay. Um, so this is this is what this is the reality of who Jesus is. This is the reality of what Jesus has, uh, you know, the kind of um, uh, the power and the authority that he wields, the son, the deity of the son. So, um, so he's saying, you know, he's just contrasting how he came, how he laid down <clears throat> all his majesty and the, and the glory that he had with the father um the eternal one becoming finite uh, living as finite man 
and uh, and because of which he is highly exalted and this is what he is who he is right now right um therefore my beloved verse 12 and let's read that therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of god without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain or labored in vain yes and if i am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith i am glad and rejoice with you all for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me okay look at his reason for rejoicing and anyway, we come to that so he says therefore my beloved he, this is who jesus is this is the kind of mind and the mindset that he had and i want you to have the same kind of mindset you know, being like minded being of one accord striving to the gather for the faith of the gospel looking out for the interests of others as well as your own interests i want you to live this way and he talks about the glory the deity of the lord jesus that you know just think about it at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue can confess what what do they confess that jesus is lord right this is what <clears throat> they they you know the they have come down to it, it, it this is what it will come down to right that uh, this is the reality okay so this is what is going to happen and so therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed this is how you have lived, lived not in my presence but also in my absence um so i am asking you to work out your salvation right i am asking you to work out um, your salvation just a minute please sorry yeah with fear and trembling so what does he mean by that right work out your salvation right as you've always obeyed either in my presence or in my absence now work out okay live out um or finish fashion Okay, to uh, to make something fit. So he's saying, you know, you you live this out, you accomplish this, you achieve this, work out your salvation. Now, does that mean that uh, you know I'm not saved and I need to work out or you know achieve something on my own? No, no, that salvation is purely a work of grace. and we receive it by faith right so when we receive salvation it's by faith it is a work of grace it's something that is freely given but for me to live out this salvation or for me to live this saved life you know, live this life as a believer who's saved now i need to work that out right i what are some things that i need to do i need to make some choices i need to make sure that my mind is renewed to the word of god i need to receive the uh, the the engrafted word which is able to save my soul right save my soul meaning change my like uh, james talked about talks about uh, change my thinking renew my thinking my imagination and everything and so that my my behavior my action my speech my everything changes right now i need to work that out so paul says you know this is the god whom you worship this is the lord whom you follow so therefore you need to work that out with fear and trembling right you need to live that out with fear and trembling for it is god who works with you now this is another amazing thing that this is god who works in you 
both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And for it is God who works in you, both to to both to will and to do for his good pleasure. You know, if um, uh, I think that's verse 13, right? Yeah. I just want to read from another translation, which is uh, the, the Passion Translation. It says, God will continue, continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Right? He will continually work or re revitalize you. Right? Um, and another Good News Bible says, because God is always at work in you to make you willing and able to obey his own, purpose okay so what is it that god is working in you the, the fact is that uh, you know that work that word work uh, meaning it's uh, an effective fervent mighty work powerful work energeo you know, effective powerful work so it is god who is at work in you both to will and to do okay both to desire something both to decide come to that place of decision um, or being able to make a choice he works in you right of course the choice will be made by us but he works in us he influences us by his spirit and by his word so it is god who works in you both to will and to do do something for his good pleasure right that brings him delight that brings him pleasure for his good pleasure so work that out with fear and trembling work out your salvation with fear and trembling and he works in you it's not like you have to you know do it in your own strength or in your own ways but we have the holy spirit who is in us and we are in a way empowered or energized by the holy spirit by god himself both to will right to to even to desire he brings he influences us he leads us he prompts us right both to will and to 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 whatever you desire to carry it out right sometimes there could be a gap in what i desire and what i do Right. My intentions are good, but then I'm not able to carry out my intentions right? because there needs to be a dying to the pull of the flesh. And how can I die to the pull of the flesh? It is by the Holy Spirit. When I live according to the Holy Spirit, when I live by the Spirit, I will put to death what we saw in Galatians. Right? We, we studied in Galatians that if I live by the Spirit, Galatians 5 and verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Okay, so in wanting to do the things of the spirit, there could be the lust of the flesh that is preventing me, pulling me back and carrying out these good intentions, you know, these good desires. So how do I do that? When I walk in the spirit. When I make a choice, moment by moment choice to walk according to the leading, the guiding, the prompting, the empowering of the spirit. When I when I give in to that, right, when I decide to follow that, then I will not walk according to the lust of the flesh. Okay, so it is God who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Okay. Verse 14, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Okay, So do all things without complaining. Now, um, I'm sorry, I just closed the notes. Okay, So do all things without uh, complaining and uh, without uh, disputing so he's you know when you, when you look at the word complaining he's using the word which means murmur or grumble okay 
uh, you're just complaining, you're just murmuring, and you're grumbling. Okay, it's it's not like you're solving something. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, so well, God is not against us, you know, solving a problem. Like if there is something that needs to set right, well, we need to address it and solve it in an honorable manner. You know, it could be uh, maybe uh, something, you know, maybe some some kind of a dispute, and we need to solve it. And how can we do it? Only you know, we need to talk about what the other person is doing, not you know, doing wrong, which is just causing you some pain or some causing you the hurt. Well, God is not against that. It doesn't say that you need to be keep quiet. You know, you need to keep quiet and and not really do anything about it. No, it's here he's specifically talking about murmurings, grumblings, right? So it's like uh, it's you know, in fact, in the Greek, it means it's a secret debate, right? It's uh, it means it's a secret debate. You just you know, it's uh, it's not openly talking about things but then it's just a secret uh, debate you know where you're saying that this is wrong that is wrong it's in secret okay so muttering murmuring so Paul is saying don't do that do all things without complaining do all things without uh, disputing okay even that that word there disputing okay uh, so what does that uh, that mean? What does that mean? That means that um, you know, uh, arguing, questioning what is true. You know, it's um, so it in the in a positive way. It means okay, you you have a discourse or you're having a dialogue, right? Or you're having a uh, you're having a debate. You're talking about the pros and cons, right? And uh, you're talking about it, you're dialoguing, right? So here, he's not talking about, you know, the, it's, it's in a negative, right? Saying you're murmuring and you're disputing, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a healthy discussion. You're just murmuring, you're complaining, and uh, with, without, you know, wanting to solve something, right? You're just murmuring, you're complaining, and you're disputing. Right, so um, it's it's again, uh, you know, the word again. It's like you're thinking within yourself, right? You're deliberating within yourself. You're you're doubting. You're it's it's more like an internal thing that's happening, right? So, which which means that it's going to affect the way you, you know, the way you move with the other person, the way you consider the other person, and so on, right? So. So do all things without complaining and disputing. Okay. And then he says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. So this is what will happen. This will be the outcome. If you live in this manner, this will be your outcome. This is what you will turn out to be, that you will be like shining lights in the world. Right? You will be dispelling darkness. People will be will, people will see uh, clearly because of the light that emanates from you. Right? You'll be like shining lights in the world, uh, and uh, you'll be dispelling darkness. And in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, this is how it will be: a generation that is perverse, a generation that is crooked. Uh, you will be like this. You will be children of light. You will be blameless. You will be harmless. Um, and that's verse 15, right? Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll continue in our next class, right? So thank you. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.